Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining to you how to do your first assignment, which we're calling organelle um, analogies. Uh, so here's the quick introduction. Sometimes the best way to understand an abstract topic is to use an, an analogy. Um, and this cellular world is very small. We can't really see what's going on, so it might as well pretty much be abstract to us. So we're going to try to use analogies to understand it. Um, and an analogy is sort of, um, this is not a formal definition, but it's an extended comparison between two concepts. So it's not like saying, you know, that uh, love is a battlefield or something like that, right? Like uh, you could make like a simple kind of comparison there, like people could get hurt or something like that, but you can't take the analogy too far. I mean, you can't make that many points of comparison maybe, but um, what we're going to be doing is producing an analogy where you can make a lot of points of comparison. Uh, so, um, in this assignment, you are going to be explaining cellular concepts related to organelles um, and other things by way of analogy. Okay, so um, essentially there are two parts to your project. You're going to have to complete an outline, which I've provided to you below here. You're going to have to submit that outline. And with your outline, you're also going to submit a final presentation, uh, which could be a PowerPoint presentation or a slideshow. You could hand in a Google Slides or Prezi or any other number of things that you might create. Okay, so an, you want an outline and a final presentation. So you are going to, in your outline and then in your presentation, develop an analogy to explain how organelles uh, in a cell function. Okay, so this below here now is your outline. Uh, so you will fill in the blank here. A cell is like a something. Um, so you could pick maybe something from this list here, or you could make up something that's not on this list. Um, there is one thing I'm going to say that you can't use. Don't say that a cell is like a factory. Um, and the reason I don't want you to do that is because uh, to try to explain this better to you, I've given you an example, and in my example, I've, I've used this. Um, so please choose something from this list or something entirely different of your own uh, creation. Okay, so I'm going to say a cell is like a factory in my example. Okay, and so if a cell is like a factory, then the organelles are, and what I'm going to fill in here is, if I'm using a factory, for example, as my example, um, what in a factory is like the nucleus? What is like the cytosol? What is like the cell membrane? And so on. And here I'm going to explain how. So if I think part of it is like the nucleus, how is it like that nucleus? Okay, and then I've got two more questions to answer down here. So um, if... It is difficult to create a perfect analogy, so pick one organelle from your list and explain why it doesn't quite fit with your analogy. Um, probably that's going to happen somewhere, um, and that's okay. And then finally, explain how you could use your analogy to explain cancer. So you might have to be a little bit creative there. Um, when you've answered all of these questions on this outline, uh, you're going to prepare a slideshow, as we said, um, that answers these questions. Um, you can add voice to your presentation if you wish. If you want to make like a video, you can do that as well. Um, you can make a screencast if you want. Uh, there's a website called Screencast-O-Matic. Um, I'll just show you that one. So, uh, whoops. Screen, there you go. Screencast, S-C-R-E-E-N-C-A-S-T. If you just Google Screencast-O-Matic, you'll find it. Um, it's a really easy tool to use. Um, I often use it to record my videos. I'm, I'm not using it to record this one because um, it might be too long and I have to flip back and forth between things. Uh, but if it's a simple video, um, this might be a good one to use if you wanted to do that. But you don't have to. You could just do a simple slideshow if you want. Uh, okay, so where were we? We're here. Um, let me show you my example then to give you an idea about how this might work. So as I said in my example, I'm going to say that a cell is like, and I'm going to be a little bit more specific, I'll say toy factory. So um, if that's true, then what would the organelles be? Well, the nucleus maybe could be described as the factory manager's office. So this is where all the decisions in the factory happen, um, and the instructions for building the toys can be found here. So I'm kind of relating um, not just the idea that this is the control center, that this is where decisions are made, but specifically that there is a set of instructions. So that kind of goes with the DNA. Uh, the cytosol is like the factory floor, so that's like the main areas in the factory where everybody's working. Um, cell membrane is the factory gate and security, so again, making it clear that it's not a wall, 
Uh, it's more like a gate. Cell membranes have plenty of holes in them, um, and purposely so, so they can let things move in and let things move out. But it's more about controlling what moves in and what moves out. So it's, it's not a, a wall that stops everything from getting in and getting out. It's very selective. Things are supposed to go in, things are supposed to go out, but it has to be controlled. Um, I wasn't too happy with what I did here with mitochondria, but you can see it clearly has something to do with energy. Um, rough ER, conveyor belts and sorting machines that separate toys, send them places. Uh, chloroplast is like a solar panel. So I have all these things here. You can look at them. Hopefully you get the idea. But I do want to talk about the last couple of questions because they're maybe a little weirder. Okay, so it is difficult to create a perfect analogy. Um, pick one organelle from your list and explain why it doesn't quite fit with your analogy. So I, I picked two. Um, I said I didn't really like what I did with mitochondria, so that might be something that goes in here. Um, I was able to get the energy piece into the mitochondria. Um, it says here it's rechargeable batteries that power forklifts and other equipment. So I managed to capture this idea that it's a stored chemical energy, which is like what you find in a battery. Um, the fact that it's in small pieces and you can kind of hand them out to different places. So that was good. I was, I was glad I was able to capture that with my analogy. Um, but I wasn't quite happy with it because there were some aspects to this that don't really fit with real life mitochondria. So let's look at what I did here. Um, so in, uh, and also with, sol with chloroplasts being solar panels, there was something I didn't quite like there. So in the real world, um, meaning in the world of cells, um, energy from the sun converted to chemical energy within a chloroplast. Um, so you go from solar energy to chemical energy, right? We store it in sugar. Um, if we were to have a solar panel in a factory, you convert that um, solar energy to electrical energy. So it's not quite the same. Um, that's difficult to store. Um, and then finally, when we got to this point where we had sort of like mitochondria, it says in the real world, meaning the world of cells, um, mitochondria takes stored chemical energy, meaning sugar, from the, from the chloroplast, and break it down into small manageable pieces of chemical energy. So they're taking chemical energy and basically breaking it into smaller quantities of chemical energy that can be passed out. Um, but in my analogy, as a rechargeable battery, that's not what happens, right? If you, the way that you charge a battery is not by taking larger amounts of chemical energy. Most of the time, what you do is you plug it into the wall and use electrical energy. So my analogy is not perfect. Um, and uh, I don't expect your analogy to be perfect, but I do expect you to be able to analyze it in this kind of question. There will be at least something that you can say with some of the pieces that you've chosen. Okay, number four, explain how you could use your analogy to explain cancer. Uh, so you might have to get really kind of weird and creative here. Um, what I said here is uh, imagine maybe the factory in order becomes very wealthy and begins to create many factories. So instead of one factory, you have many. Um, and the fact that you have many factories is a problem because they're polluting the environment um, and they destroy the community that they serve. So you have a lot of nasty pollution basically affecting whoever is living in the area of the factories because you have too many factories and uh, it destroys the community and so there's no one left to buy toys and so even the factories themselves shut down. So it's kind of weird and, and fanciful but you have some ideas in here, right? You have this idea of uncontrolled division that is harmful and eventually lethal. So um, you could do something similar to that. Okay, so that's what you're being asked to do. I've given you an example. Let's look at the marking scheme. So this is the marking scheme. It's already up on Brightspace. Uh, you're going to be marked on thinking, communication, application. So your thinking mark is going to be based on organization. right? Remember that you're not just doing this outline. You are going to have to create an actual uh, slideshow presentation or something of some kind. So is your work organized? Is it clear? I, can I clearly see what you're talking about in which place? Uh, is your analysis insightful? Um, as to why your analogy might not be perfect. So that question, I think it was question three. Um, is it clear that you've put a lot of thought into this, right? You haven't picked out maybe just something really obvious about why your analogy doesn't work, but you've thought deeply about it. And even if it is maybe something obvious, are you able to analyze it in sort of a, a deeper level? Uh, creative interpretation of what cancer would look like in your model. So those questions, three and four, are going to go under the thinking category as well as your organizational skills and your creativity. 
Um, your communication mark is going to be based on are your analogies well explained. So that chart that you're creating, um, it's not just do you have the right idea, but are you able to explain the idea well? Is it is it easy to understand the words that you're using? Uh, correct use of biological terminology. Um, at this point, you should have a pretty extensive glossary, so you can be using that. Um, pictures used in your presentation clarify what you're trying to say. So do you have a good use of visuals to further elaborate on what you're trying to say, um, as well as spelling and grammar. Finally, your application mark is going to be based on uh, the actual choices that you make in your analogy. Are they logical? Um, it, does it make sense to compare one thing to another thing? Um, and does that comparison show that you have a clear understanding of what each organelle does? Um, so you know what each organelle does, that bit is clear, and you've made a logical choice um, where you can look at it and say, yeah, that, that makes sense. I see why you've linked that idea with that other idea. Okay, so the whole point of this is really to get you thinking about organelles beyond just memorizing definitions um, because that doesn't really teach you much. Okay, so um, again, if you've got any questions further about the assignment, please see me on my office hours, send me an email. Um, that's all I've got to say for now. Thank you.